in Isaiah, we read the account of, and he, he writes about how Satan or Lucifer desired he was doing what he was called to do or placed in charge of on the earth and he says that I'm going to be this is what I'm going to do he, he lists out Lucifer's strategy and basically at the end of it Lucifer says all this stuff and he says I'm going to, I'm going to ascend this mountain and I'm going to be like God I'm going to be like God that was the sin that, that, was the, that was the deception that entered Lucifer's heart that got him cast out of heaven I want you to hear me for a few minutes this morning. You got to stay right where you're at. Stay right where you're at. He said, I'm going to be like God. He gets cast out of heaven. A third of the angels go with him. And God's response, the Godhead's response was, let's make man in our image. And the Bible says that they that God takes dirt and he forms man and he breathes in his nostrils the breath of life. And he created Corel, us humans, to be like him. The thing that Lucifer desired to be, the very thing that he wanted, he created you and I to be. And every time, every time, see this is where the misconception or some of the man-made junk that we believe comes in. Every time that we fail, we fall, we do something wrong, we think it's about us. We think it's about, I suck, I'm terrible, my, I, I can't get it, it's my behavior, all this kind of stuff. And really what Luce cares about, he doesn't give a flying flip, Catherine, that you had a bad day and that you yelled at somebody. He doesn't care. What he wants to do is he wants to look back at God and he wants to say, look at you. It's not about you and me. Look at you. I want you to understand in this room, this is a kind of crazy theological statement. You can't get any more like God than you are right now. You, hear me, you, you cannot be any more like God than you are right now. Look at your neighbor and say, you're looking at God. Come on, do it. Now raise your hand if you say that was really uncomfortable for you to say. Why? Because we judge ourselves by our shortcomings. We judge ourselves by our behavior. We judge ourselves by the things that we do. We judge ourselves by the report card that man gave us. We judge ourselves by the judgments that the world has given us and the kingdom has given us. That's how we see ourselves. But I want to explain to you what your inheritance looks like. Your inheritance looks like godness. Your inheritance looks like seated in him with heavenly places at the right hand of the Father. Your inheritance looks like the right Christ. I'm about to throw this mind. Your inheritance looks like the righteousness of Christ. Your inheritance looks like the face of Jesus. And when Satan says, look at you. When Satan says, look at you. Look at you. Denise, you're terrible. It's not about Denise. It's about him getting to look at God and say, look at your image. Oh, look how terrible you are. You, you went and created this human. You went and created this person that was going to look like you and act like you and talk like you and be like you and rule like you and reign like you. Look at this. That's not your inheritance. That's not your inheritance. Your inheritance is declared righteousness. Your inheritance is declared righteousness. You are more godly right now than you've ever been in your entire life. And guess what? There's nothing that you can do to get rid of the godliness that he has given you. In Isaiah, he says, I want to be like God. And I look at a room full of people that are just like God. See, this will mess with you because we've been told our whole life that we're dirty, no good, nasty sinners, saved by grace only. It's the only way, David, that I can escape the flames of hell is that this dirty, little, nasty sinner go accept it. Now, there are aspects of that that are so true. But there's the thing is when this dirty sinner falls on the knees in front of a bloody, nasty, 
disgusting cross and I get on my knees in that place and I accept by faith the fact that he died for me and he took my sin that acceptance that change happens when I go away from the dirty nasty sinner I go away from the label of dirty nasty sinner and I get what his righteousness and he calls me son and he says the same thing over me that he said over Jesus this is my son in whom I'm well pleased and I haven't done a daggone thing to earn it I haven't done a thing to deserve it but I have full access we've been preaching this to you for a month and a half and yet we sit in this room with people that are still flooded with performance and you're flooded with the report card and there's people in this room Lexi hit the nail on the head Thursday night service she said there's so much frustration happening Thursday's an inter, in intercession service and she said I feel people that are frustrated and they're hitting a wall and I'm telling you right now people that are under the sound of my voice that are listening on the live stream right now you will be so frustrated and you will be so dissatisfied why because you cannot stay you cannot stay in the old knowledge you cannot stay in the old revelation God spoke to us and said when we begin to paint this building and we begin to remodel that he's remodeling our theology he's remodeling our belief system he's changing he's erasing things that you've believed for years that are incorrect and they were handed to you down by men that loved God but didn't know any better and they preached what they inherited but I was in worship and I heard a little kid Pastor Mike behind me laugh and it pierced my heart <sighs> pierced my heart Keith because I'm sitting here going man I'll take the scrutiny I'll take the lashes Adam I'll take the this that and the other that comes with it why because it's about the generations because I believe there are a generation of young men and women Andrea that are rising up that aren't going to have to float through all the crap that we've had to float through they're not going to have to deal with the religion they're not going to have to deal with the you're not good enough or you didn't add up or you didn't do this enough they're going to grow up knowing that they belong at the table they're going to they're going to grow up belonging and they're going to understand that I can walk into daddy's house and I can sit at the table and I can eat whenever I want to. Bryce, what does it look like for our kids? What does it look like for your kids to walk in and understand that I have full access to God? What does it look like for Emma and Isabel to know I have full access in the house of God? I don't have to do anything. I don't have to praise the right way. I don't have to serve the right way. I don't have to do anything. I have full access to Him. Why? Because He calls me His son. He calls me His daughter. And I have a seat at the table. What does it look like for our kids? I'm telling you, I'm 43. I've been doing training camp since I was 19. And I've never been more excited to look a generation in the eye and say, you got it. Full access. Full access. Full access. Full access. And I'm, I'm just going to prophesy for a moment that some of you parents are going to get outran by your kids because of your unwillingness to change. Yes. And I'm not saying that in a negative way because every one of us should have the desire for our kids to outrun us. I don't want my kids to outrun me. I just want them to be a little ahead of me because I'm fat and older than them. They're a little younger. Their legs have a little more strength. But I promise you right now, I'm not sitting back and watching them run. I'm going to be right on their shirt tails. How many of y'all old people with me on that? I say old. I'm 43. How many of y'all people that have been in the kingdom for a long time? How many of y'all say, I'm not, I'm not going to let you just run on ahead because I believe you guys are about to run ahead, but I'm going to be there in revelation. I'm going to be there in my understanding. I'm going to be there and say, I'm throwing off the old doctrine. I'm throwing off the old chunky theology that was man-made and handed down generation after generation. And I'm stepping into declared righteousness. I'm stepping into true inheritance. And because of that, I am completely free. And in 1 John 1, 1 John 1, we have all the Gospels. Actually, 1 John's one of the last books written, even, even historically, if you put it in chronological order. 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, Revelation was one of the last books written. And he could have wrote about anything he wanted. He could have wrote it about anything. He could have wrote another Gospel account. He could have wrote about what he saw. He could have wrote about all this stuff. But I want, I'm going to read this to you, and then we're going to go home. I was in the office, Lucas came in, he said, how you doing? I said, not good. He said, why? I said, because God just threw everything I was going to do in the trash. He says, don't you love it when he does that? I said, absolutely not, but yes. I just wish he 
And I walked into the office, and I'm, I promise, I walked into the office, and it's, I, you know, you all have how God speaks to you. You know the voice. I pray to God. Pray to God you know it. God, and I want you to fall in love with it. I want you to get into the presence of God and fall in love with it. And if you show them wherever you're at, then we are failing you. And I don't want to be. We heard him speak. Actually touched him. The one who is from. He said, what's the response? If you've seen me. You just want to release to you. Understand that. Understand that it's not about. You'll be frustrated. God, pure, pure life. Our entire lives. Our entire lives. Choosing, we're continuous. Not choosing, we're continuous. Not even, not even a ch- and for God's a ch- and for God's so mind and your spirit. Want him, you still are expecting your memory. In a good way. Because for a long time the the charismatic world was very uh, shallow, I should say, in word. Now we can we can huck a buck and dance and twirl and swing from the rafters and we can, and, and I'm, look, I'm all, I'm all for all of that. All of that. Some of y'all, some of y'all, I, I try not to judge during worship, but I'm like, you know, I know you act better than that at a football game. I just be, I just be real. That's just, that's my personality. Some of y'all praise the Colts more than you praise Jesus. That's just me. Just, I got to kick you at least once. If you can stand in your living room with your hands up, but you can't jump up and down in this building, you got your gods mixed up. And uh, we're talking about how the charismatics, you know, we, we had the shallow. And so you see, really, honestly, what you see is somewhat of a small exodus out of the Pentecostal churches into the denominal world because they want to hear Bible verses and bullet points and blah, 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 which is which is, nothing's negative about that. But knowledge without Holy Spirit is extremely dangerous. It's extremely dangerous. You can have a theology degree, and if you have no encounter or experience to go with that theology degree, you're probably one of the most dangerous people in the church. But I want to say it this way, rightfully so, the reverse is also true. You can pray in the Holy Ghost, you can huck a buck, and you can swing from the rafters, but if you can't quote four scriptures, you're dangerous. You're dangerous. And there's got to be this marriage in the middle of where people begin to not take my word for it, not take Pastor Lucas's word for it, not take Pastor Nathan's word for it. I want you to hear me. Uh, not take Pastor Mike's word for it because he's been preaching before sliced bread was invented. That's not, we're not, just because he's been preaching that long doesn't mean you should take his word for it. What it means is that you should, it should so stir you to know this man that we're talking about. It should so stir you that somebody should go home today and read John 1, chapter 1 and go, man, there's no darkness in him. There's not even a trace of darkness. So what does it look like to serve a God that's full of light that means everything that i believed about him being that sorry Brittany. everything that i believe i just i just thought of it i'm squirrel everything that i believed she requested that i don't walk back and forth so dang fast because it's just blurry and i just caught myself 0.2 seconds and god was like slow down for Brittany. it wasn't god it's just my brain everything that i believed about him that said he's negative and he's mean I got a text this morning from a sweet girl who just last lost her mom. And she said, I don't understand why he would do this. And my reply was, he didn't. And you have to come into the understanding that he is good and loving and kind. And he's only capable of goodness and loving and kindness. And we got to get that out of our system. You got, I cannot, 
You cannot come into this building every Sunday and hear us declare about the goodness of God. I could preach for the next six months about the declared righteousness of Jesus. And if you don't crack open that book, if you don't crack open that Bible, if you don't hit your knees and pray and say, God, I want to know you like he says and he, they declare that I can know you, then guess what? You will be in the exact same place five years from now with the exact same struggle because it is an invitation into a relationship. And it is nothing about your attendance here. It is nothing about your giving. It is nothing about your this, that, or the other. It's nothing about your serving. That is all a byproduct of you knowing who you truly are. I walked into a building, the church attendance yesterday. I watched, I looked at it. They had one of them old school boards. It was 25 people, and the offering was $20. And I said, that's the church. 20 people, and not one of them gave a buck. Not everybody even gave a buck consumers, people that don't know who they are, they just show up to check boxes, and I'm telling you, tell that's not Bethel Worship Center. It's not Bethel Worship Center, and I believe, I want you to hear me, I believe, Lucas and I was talking about it, we're getting ready to see an explosion of the Spirit in the denominal world. I just want you to hear me. We're about to see churches that don't preach Holy Spirit are getting ready to get rocked. We're actually already seeing it. If you want some testimonies, go talk to Pastor Lucas because there are friends church pastors right now that are going, I don't know what's going on, but I got to reach out to somebody. There are, there are Church of Christ pastors that are going, we took this class and it's ruined our life and now we don't even know what to do. Do we stay here? Do we go? Do we have to, we have to talk to our denomination? What, what do we do? And it's not about it, if our heart as Pentecostals or Charismatics, if our heart is, oh, we told you so, then we missed the whole freaking picture. Yes. But if it brings about in me a sense of revival and a sense of, oh man, revival's happening, awakening's happening, people are coming to the knowledge of Jesus, people are understanding that he is good. When, when a college student in class has to do a presentation on the Holy Ghost and she's scared to death because it's a Wesleyan school and all of a sudden she's sitting around a discussion and every kid in the circle has tears in their eyes because they want something greater and more and better and her anxiety didn't override her ability to say, look, I've experienced this. I don't know how to break it down. So she comes and meets with Miss Miriam because she's like, you were raised Wesleyan. Help me out. <laughs> and now all of a sudden there's a class having a discussion about the goodness of God and what the Holy Spirit looks like. I'm telling you, it should stir in our hearts, but I'm telling you, this is the revival that's coming because it's not in a church building. It's in you. It's in you. And who cares if we can all come in here in a greenhouse that has the right temperature, it's the, it's the right moisture, it's the, it's, this is like a green, it's, everything's perfect in this little greenhouse right here with, with white walls and we're trying to make an ugly thing pretty. Everything's perfect right here. But what's it like when you're at home and confusion knocks on the door? Or something happens you don't understand don't call me I will answer I'm the only Dalton that answers the phone Amen. Amen. come on can I Amen. I'm the only if you ever have a gun to your head and they say call somebody and if they answer you die if they don't answer you live call Tasha or Nathan Dalton they will never answer the phone I'm like, dude, I could be, I could have fallen out of a tree stand, have bones snapped out of my legs, bleeding out. And I call you and I, there's just, not, just nothing. They don't answer. So what I want to end with this morning. There are people in this room, Lexi hit it Thursday night, that are frustrated with the system and what it's produced in you. And you're not getting the results that you want because you're still trying to do it the man-made way that was given to you. So you're not evil, you're not bad, you're not this, that, or the other. It was what we, it's what we inherited. And there's frustration. Is there anybody in the room honest enough to say, I'm frustrated? Go ahead, raise your hand, look at me. Just, I'm just frustrated. I don't know why, I'm just frustrated. I want you to meet me in the middle real quick. Come on, it's fine. Frustration.
They're going to start singing uh, Sound Mine again. one of the hardest altar calls for a pastor because I can't answer your question but I can point you to somebody and I can say this that if you the Bible promises something that if we seek him with all of our heart we will find him and some of you I'm just going to be real some of you got to quiet all the other voices so many voices some of you you got you got professors in your head you got this that and the other in your head you got preachers in your head you got your mom and dad in your head you got husbands and girlfriends and whatever in your head wives in your head people in your head you got to quiet all the other voices shut them all up and you literally have to go God I believe that you are good and that there's not a trace of darkness on the inside of you and I'm so done doing it my way and trying to get the results that only come through surrender so I, I, Jerry I'm I'm not this is not an altar call from somebody that is I'm still learning true story I'm still learning how to erase 43 years man of of bad belief of I mean, I'm still dying to small things. I mean, I've stepped out of everything. I'm just being transparent for a moment. I've stepped out of everything. I don't, I'm not going to Ohio. I'm not going to Virginia. I don't have a group right now. I don't have nothing. Why? Because I can't lead people to something that I don't understand. And what you'll see is you'll hear preachers trying to preach this message. But because it hasn't been rooted and grounded in them, it will just be words. And it won't carry any weight because we have to process this. And I'm sitting there going, God, I don't, I, 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 I'm done. I'm done with the, and I've had to die to the, to, to what could be counted and what could be measured because I want to carry what can be weighed. Nathan preached that. It's not about what can be counted and what can be measured, but man, I want my words to carry weight. I want anointing. I want glory to come off of my life. And that's only going to happen when I just put everything away and I just become a son. And I understand that there's literally nothing. I can have all the charisma in the world. I can have a speaking. I can have all this stuff. I can start John and Cody and I can start all this stuff and I can have a business and I can be phenomenally talented college student and I can be all of these things. But if I don't know him face to face, and I haven't encountered the fact that he's good and in him there is no darkness then I will struggle with frustration that's where the eyes start to go well if they did this or if he would do this or if she did this or that did this it's nothing none of those people none of those people dictate my future so I want you all as the church I want you to stretch your hands forward and we're just going to release the Holy Spirit to go through and begin to erase the lies of, of just the thoughts. I mean, some of you have had some, I'm just going to be real, some really outrageous, outlandish thoughts about others. About others. What's crazy about it is when you do that with others, you fail to see your own stuff. You fail to see. I, I, I'm so focused on what everybody else is doing wrong and what, how everybody else has screwed me and all this kind of stuff that I fail to see my own shortcomings. So God, as Yuri begins to sing, I release Holy Spirit to go into this room right now up front here. And I remove frustration of self-effort. The frustration of I am trying so hard, but the problem is you're trying so hard. And you just have to sit at his feet, look into his eyes, and become the son and become the daughter that he's called you to be. So God, I release, I release, God, I release Jerry from having to perform and strive and work 
the exhaustion that comes, God, the exhaustion and the frustration. I can't do better. I can't be better. I can't try hard. I still feel left out. I still feel distant. I still feel like you're not there. And I'm so freaking frustrated. I want to scream. Just so I'm just reading your brain right now. I want to scream. I want to punch a wall. Why? Because I and a man in my own strength have been unable to do what only God can do. So, Jerry, I release over you this morning complete freedom, God, from the man-made, complete freedom from the performance and the striving. It's the same striving you did to earn your father's love. It's the same striving you did to earn your wife's trust. It's the same striving that you did. But it doesn't work with God. It doesn't work with God. He just wants your heart. He just wants your life. He just wants your attention. He just wants your time. So, God, I release that off of him this morning. God, I release that off of him this morning. So, God, we release Holy Spirit. God, every, every confusion, every frustration, every confusion, every frustration, God, I remove it off of their minds right now. Off of their minds right now. I'm going to release a few of you. If you have somebody you want to get behind, somebody get behind every person up here. Real quick, somebody get behind them. Put your hand on their shoulder. release over Josh over Ravon over Trish over Leah over Jerry over Devin over Cody God, over over Brenda God, over these college students God, over Faith sound mind sound mind no deception no deception no believing lies we don't wrestle people we don't fight people we don't fight flesh and blood we just get to sit in victory seated in victory at the right hand of the father no spiritual warfare necessary no spiritual warfare needed I'm already victorious. I'm already victorious. I can't be any more like God than I am right now. I can't carry any more anointing than I carry right now. I can become more aware of what I got. I can become more aware of what I carry. I can become more aware of what he's put in me. But I can't get anymore. It's already there. It's already in there. It's already in there. My belongings already in there. My faith's already in there. The healing's already in there. The faithfulness is already in there. The power's already in there. The glory's already in there. And I'm done being frustrated trying to conjure it up. I'm done being frustrated trying to, God, I don't understand. I tried to create revival. I've tried to create healing. I've tried to do all these things in and of myself by praying and fasting and then doing all of these things. But I realize that it only comes from knowing him and rest and trusting that he's a good God. I released over Bethel Worship Center this morning that our heart remains with not things that can be counted, not things that can be measured. God, but we as a church want to carry weight. We want to carry weight. We want to carry glory. We want to carry anointing. We want people to come in with religious dichotomies, God, that are not correct. And we want so much love and weight and glory in this room that it erases bad theology. It erases bad belief systems. It erases lies that they believed about themselves and you for years. And we're asking God for an anointing. God, I'm asking God this morning for an anointing anointing over Bethel Worship Center. God, that Bethel Worship Center will carry an anointing to break mental, God, chains off of people that have been so locked in religion, that have been so locked, God, in man-made theology, so locked, God, in bad belief system that they will come in here and they will taste and see that you're good. They will taste and see that you are kind, you are gentle, you are great, you are good, and there is not a trace of darkness in you. There's not a trace of judgment. God, there's not a trace, God. You only judge the sin that misidentifies us. You don't judge me. You judge what causes confusion. You don't judge me. You judge what causes me not to be who I am. 
God, we release that anointing over this house. I release that anointing over our people. God, the members of Bethel Worship Center, as they work, God, as they go to school, as they go to their jobs, as they go to their families, God, they will be an instrument that releases the goodness of God into people's hearts. They will be an instrument, God, that releases the kindness of God into people's hearts. And it will no longer be about performance. It will no longer be about self-effort, God, but it will be about what he did. That's the good news of the gospel that brings people to salvation. And I release it over this house. I release it over our people. I release it over what we preach. I release it over what we sing. God, I release it, God, that we will, God, we will sing songs of declared righteousness. We will sing songs that bring wholeness. God, we will bring, we will sing, God, in worship. God in spirit and truth. I release that over us this morning. Release that over us this morning, Jesus.